Hey, so this is a short video for the song Wagon Wheel by Darius Rucker. Just basically how to play it. It's a very basic song. It's only got four chords in it. It's also an opportunity for me to see if I can improve my uh, video editing skills and put images as well. So see how that goes later on. Anyway, so the song consists of four chords. First chord is a G. Now I have these colored dots on my guitar. Sort of stationary dots. You can buy off Amazon 8mm stationary dots. Just a good way to have your... So the, the chords are visible on your guitar, and it also means you can refer to them by colour as well as name. So on my guitar, that's the green chord. So G is second fret of the A string, that's the fifth string. Third fret of the top string, the sixth string, sorry, the bottom string, the sixth string. And third fret of the top string, the high E string, the first string. So that's G. First finger, second finger, third finger. The next chord is D, which on my guitar is the yellow chord here. So you've got your first finger on the second fret of the G string, the third string. Your second finger on the second fret of the high E string, the top string. And your third finger on the string in between, the third fret of the B string. So it's like a kind of a triangle shape pointing up that way. Now that's a five string chord, so you don't play this string when you score it. You can include A if you want to, but don't chuck in that E string. The next chord is E minor. Now, on my guitar, I've got the blue dots here for the E major chord. So, first fret of the G string, second fret of the A string, second fret of the D string. But we don't use this note for E minor. So this finger comes off and we play with these two fingers and that's E minor. And finally, the C chord is the pink dots here. So you've got your first finger on the first fret of the B string, your second finger on the second fret of the D string, fourth string and your third finger on the third fret of the A string, the fifth string. And again this is generally played without this. You can, there is a six string version of C where you also include this note but generally C is played like this and it's a five string chord. So in Wagon Wheel there are two sequences. The first sequence is all the chords so it starts off with a G, then a D, then an E minor, C. Second time through it's G, D, and then C twice. And that's all the way through the song. It just repeats that pattern over and over again. Now there are one or two things just to, so like I said to you, I would say you're probably best playing your E minor like this because that makes the change from the E minor to the C easier because your first finger is available. And just general thing for playing chords, obviously when you're a beginner and you're learning to play chords, you're using your left hand for the chords if you're right handed and that's obviously your weaker hand and generally speaking the finger that you have the most control over according to a video I watched on YouTube recently when I did a bit of research about this is this finger, your index finger. So most beginner guitar players will put that finger down first. Now that gives you a sense that you've started the chord, so I'm on my way, I've started my C chord here, let's say we're doing the C chord. Problem being that this is the finger over which you have the most control and is the easiest to place. Whereas these two fingers, your second and third finger, and especially this finger, your pinky, tend to, you have the least control over. So a tip that I saw from a video on YouTube was that you should practice putting your other fingers on first and put your first finger on last. So in that case, if I was playing the G, I would start with my second and third fingers on the third fret of the two E strings, the bottom one and the top one, and then place my first finger on the second fret of the A string. Then for D, that means you would put down these two fingers first. So the second fret of the high E string, the first string, and the third fret of the B string, and then place your first finger on the second fret of the G string. Now for the E minor chord, you're using your second and third fingers. You kind of put them together like that. A bit like the kind of rock and roll sign, you know, your two fingers together there. So you've got those two on the second fret of the A string and the D string. And that means finally to get your C, all you have to do is swap these over. So this finger, which is currently on the second fret of the A string, goes to the second fret of the D string. And your third finger, which is currently on the second fret of the D string, moves up to the third fret of the A string. And that leaves your first finger free to place on there. Now I think that's probably good advice because you're, 
to build up the control you need of your other fingers, thinking about them is obviously going to help you to consciously place them on the fretboard rather than sticking down your first finger, feeling that slight sense of relief and then kind of being all over the place. We're trying to get these fingers down because they're not really under the control of your brain. So you're trying to build up the connections in your brain that control these fingers so you can consciously do that. So I think that's a really good piece of advice. It's a piece of advice I think works for all beginning guitar players. Use your other fingers first and place this finger last. Now the other thing about um, Wagon Wheel is your strumming pattern. Now Wagon Wheel is in 4-4 four, four, which means there are four beats to every bar of the music and four beats for each chord sequence. So it goes one, two, three, So four beats for each bar. So you're strumming. Now your strumming hand goes up and down, which means it's doing two movements per beat. One, two, three, four. So if you're strumming down, you're playing on the beat. One, two, three, four. And if you're doing an up strum, you're playing off the beat. So one, two, three, four. Now some people sometimes count this as an and, so you can go one and two and three and four and you can certainly do that if that makes things any easier for you but obviously your strumming movement is a continuous up and down movement and the difference is whether or not you actually play the strings so if you strum down the way and the next strum is also down strum you have to bring your hand up to do that down strum so you're going down up but you're not strumming on the up so the first beat of the bar one you just go down one and two you go down up so it's one and two and so you're doing both the down stroke and the up stroke the third beat you're passing on the down stroke but strumming on the up stroke which is on the and so you would go one and two and three and and then for the last down the last beat of the bar it's down and up so down I wouldn't give too much, you know, don't get too worked up about the strumming pattern. Even if you're just doing that and changing chords, you're improving your technique. And obviously over time, these things will kind of fall into place. So the trick is to think about them, but don't beat yourself up if you can't do it because it's all new at the moment. And as you learn the guitar, these things, will, these connections will be made by your brain without you having any conscious knowledge of it. Someday you'll just pick up the guitar and it'll kind of, these things will start to fall into place. And that's why you're practicing for that event to happen. But you're not, you're not gonna have a moment in your guitar playing where you suddenly, you consciously think, oh my goodness, that's all just clicked into place. You'll just find one time when you pick up, you've been doing it enough, it becomes something you can do without having to think about it too much. So with all that in mind, now also you might have noticed when I play my G chord, I actually do tend to play it like this which is leaving your first finger free, second finger on the second fret of the A string, third finger on the third fret of the low E string, and pinky on the third fret of the high string. I do that because it's very common to have to change from G to C, and G to C when you're using the, that, fingering for the chord is very easy because all you then have to do is move these two fingers down in the same shape, because that's on the third fret and the second fret, that's also the third fret and the second fret, plunk your first finger on and lift your pinky. So I can change that to me is a quicker change or is an easier change than having to move your entire hand like that. But again, that's just, that's something I suppose as you get better at the guitar, you learn to take certain shortcuts that make it easier to play. It's a shame that wasn't the sort of deal that you got to do it straight away, but that just, I suppose, comes with experience. But I suppose for now, it's probably best to play G the way it's done as a standard chord because obviously you can make that change it just takes practice okay so overall the entire pattern with the strumming and everything we count in for one two three four G down up down up down up